Kirby's always listed in D plus tier. He's always listed in, you know, kind of, you know, low beginner trap, noob trap, whatever. I disagree. I think if you don't get go uh, good with his timing, it's a noob trap. Absolutely. Um, I do know that with Kirby, despite his size and, you know, underwhelming power, I can still KO people at, you know, 90%. Like, you can still knock people. If you get that mallet right, he's gone. Mm -hmm. So it, he... He might. He's not going to go in there and win you a fight. You've got to be good with him, but he will be able to pull out of bad situations. The amount of times I've been at 250% and still knocked people off the map because I'm just dancing around, not letting anyone get that last hit in, that is that is something Kirby can do that a lot of characters cannot, mm -hmm. especially in that first game. Young Junk! Listen, you jerk, is Kirby only in the Smash Brothers series because his dad invented the game? Listen, you jerk, put some respect on my little pink puffball's name. Hey everybody, welcome back to Listen You Jerk, where we're going through the Smash Bros. roster, and we're going to find out a lot about Ozzy's main, the Kerbinator, Kirby himself, also known as Kirby. Kirby. As I alluded to, Kirby was actually created by Mashiro Sakurai. See, YouTube guy, I said it right this time. <laughs> um, and he invented Kirby when he was 19. Kirby Ooh. was actually supposed to be was just a stand-in like they just made this little blob character for a game boy game knowing eventually we're going to replace this so essentially he's a doodle first he's just a circle with feet and the happy face turned into a monster of a character yeah and i was being facetious earlier he absolutely the amount of titles that this guy has had over 50 um, i think and the and he has also shown fighting prowess in some of the games you know kirby superstar before this mm -hmm. he had fighter mode for the first time where he's throwing punches and kicks there's a lot of interesting versus elements that have been in his game. So absolutely belong to be in the series. And he brings a level of magic and wonder, I think, to Smash Brothers. I agree. I agree. Um, a, a lot to that point, especially because he's had so many different in the Kirby universe. He's had so many different like vibes and uh, all that. You know, he's had he's had goofy sports. He's had like actual like eerie, like creepy types of games yeah. like like uh, Kirby and the Crystal Shards is one where it's very it's he's light and jovial and kind of like <laughs> But it's he, he's very, the the world that he lives in is dark, and I think that's that lends himself very well to a game like Super Smash Brothers. I believe that's the game where it's implied that like the sixth world, Freezy World, mm -hmm. like if you look at it, it's a frozen over Earth. Yeah. So essentially, Kirby takes place in a world far beyond when we have all died out already. Mm -hmm. But I have gone so deep into Kirby lore. There are some amazing Kirby lore um, creators out there. There's this one guy who always speaks with. Uh, with a, a, a bit of a lisp or like a, I'll have to tag it in the notes, but I love it. He does these massive lore things and goes deep. And it shows that essentially Kirby is like this pure being of light and wonder, but mm -hmm. his main enemy is this thing called dark matter. Yep. But at the end of all the dark matter, if you trace it back, it's essentially a being that could also be a Kirby. Yep, exactly. It's, it's like it's the yin and the yang. It's, the, it's, it's very yin, yang, light, dark, very, you know, kind of, inverse of itself so like that that's why i've always been interested in kirby is like kirby is like this one singular character that happened to like not be dark or evil or you know want chaos and all that so it's just very interesting to me especially just given how goofy that character is you go through all these worlds and you find all these really really strange like monsters and, and creatures and stuff like like sketched like like bloodshot eyeballs floating around it like it's just they the thing about kirby is even within the singular uh, world that he's in in the universe they still manage to mix it up and get you'll get sketch with 3d you'll get you know the game boy games like you would even get reveals on the enemies and stuff so it's just it's very very unique uh world building in kirby very in depth and a lot of it is told within pause screens mm -hmm. you know when, um well, Kirby is a character who started out as just a white puffball who was going through dreamland and, and essentially it was a happy adventure for, you know, people who might have been new to gaming. And mm -hmm. the idea was like he could fly. So a platformer where you can infinite fly is easy mode. Right. right. Um, but they've done so much unique and interesting stuff with his games and made it just feel so magical and wonderful mm -hmm. um, that I've played. I, I, there was a time where I was playing all of them. If you haven't played the one that's on Wii. Um, that one is incredible. The interesting thing about Kirby is in his first game, he could suck things in, he could fly, and he could spit out puffballs, and he could get some power-ups, but he mm -hmm. could not copy. No. Eventually, in Kirby's Adventure, the NES series, he gets his ability to copy, and that would kind of be 
who Kirby is going forward. Right, right. Uh, he has the ability to suck in an enemy, absorb a power, and get a new power. And part of the fun of his character is seeing him with all the different powers. Right. And that continues throughout lots of games. Eventually, he gets robotic armors, and then he gets, like, these special moves where he'll, like, inhale an entire car, and then mm -hmm. he is the car driving. Right. So it's just a just a... He's a little puffball. He's a little pink puffball that's in in infinitely stretchy, mm -hmm. uh, and that can kind of absorb and become and do anything that you would want. So he's a perfect catch-all character. So exactly. I can see why he was originally created. And his 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 powers are are I would I'm not gonna say limitless, but only limited by imagination too. It's like you know he can stretch, he can do all these things. You can absorb, you can do that. It doesn't matter what the game is. It could be Smash even like the the absorbing power kind of took what it was what would I would call a meek character and gave him these abilities that kind of like created that Kirby experience and I think that's really when it turned over I'm also interested to know I guess Mario still had it first but the uh, all the hats when they went you know the, you know you can get like the power ups in Mario but once you start putting on different hats you get different I'm wondering which came first Kirby's inhale or the hats so if someone could let me know in the comments that would be fantastic what do you mean Kirby's inhale or the hats you mean like the hats like, in like Mario, Mario 64 yeah like when he would put the hats on he'd be able to fly or if he'd put the you know like like I, th I want to say it started in the side scrolling. That'd be tough because, you know, if you go back to, I mean, if you go to Mario 1, he gets a fire flower and that changes and gives him an ability. I think, I feel like he's using the flower though. He's not, it doesn't change him. Like the hats change him, but the flower. True, like, he is wearing the Tanuki yeah. suit in Mario 3. Exactly. He's wearing the frog suit in Mario 3. Exactly. Well, then it's definitely Kirby because Kirby it would have to be Kirby right? was doing that in Super Nintendo days. Right. OK, so that's that maybe that to me then, you know, just having this conversation yeah. kind of makes me think that maybe that's that's another thing that Kirby did for the Nintendo universe was, oh, crap, this inhale ability is pretty sweet. This copy yeah. ability is sweet. How can we implement that in our already existing games? Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go through the move set. Yeah. So Kirby and Smash, you are. An OG. Yeah, I've been so, using Kirby since day one. So walk me through the move list. Um, I know. The move list is is uh, great for hand close combat and uh, range. He's or his excuse me and uh, evasion. His range is not great, and he's also light. But uh, his his hand to hand combats just with his speed and his punches. He can he can get p people from zero to ninety percent in one combo. Um, he you know his A is his forward punching. Uh, he can do that spiral punch that he does. Mm -hmm. uh, his running A is useful. Uh, his running A at originally he would kind of just roll up into a ball and kind of travel a long distance and get some damage in. Um, he did end up eventually getting, if you hit it right, uh, it he would turn into a fireball, which is extremely yeah. useful these days. I use that regularly because that is the main downside to Kirby is that mid-range, like you can't do anything, like so you kind of have to like dance your way through. And against a good player, it's kind of hard. You're not going to be able to get it. They know a Kirby's either coming over the top or they're going to try to get hand-to-hand. -hand. So, uh, yeah, the, the fireball is very helpful with that. Um, his B attacks, uh, he's got the mallet, um, obviously my favorite, he's got the down B, the boulder, um, I know a lot of people call that kind of glitchy or God forbid cheap, uh, stone attack is cheap, really? That's what, some people say that because it's like, oh, like, you know, you can line up whatever and just get it and I'm like, same as links down, it's, it's the same as a lot of things and the, the thing that makes it special is that he's invulnerable for the whole way um so like I won't even use it as like a drop attack, like if I know like crap I just got snuck, like I'm gonna get hit right now, I'll just brick up real ah, quick. as a shield yeah so and then i won't use my shield either so you can brick up and when you come back up you can get to that shield and you know keep going mm -hmm. the problem is his recovery off that move is tough so that's where a lot of times people will get you gotcha but you have to be careful with that but the uh kirby I, kirby's always listed in d plus tier he's always listed in you know kind of you know low beginner trap noob trap whatever i disagree i think if you don't get go uh, good with his timing it's a noob trap absolutely um, I do know that with Kirby, despite his size and, you know, underwhelming power, I can still KO people at, you know, 90%. Like, you can still knock people. If you get that mallet right, he's gone. Mm -hmm. So it, he he might, he's not going to go in there and win you a fight. You've got to be good with him, but he will be able to pull out of bad situations. The amount of times I've been at 250% and still knocked people off the map because I'm just dancing around and not letting anyone get that last hit in, that's, that is something Kirby can do that a lot of characters cannot, mm -hmm. especially in that first game. So uh, B up is the cutter move. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the yeah. and that has a projectile. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that, I mean, that's a cool move. And I remember when that move showed up because mm -hmm. it showed up in Kirby Superstar. Right. Where if you got the cutter ability, it was the first time I remember. Like you know, in in Kirby's Adventure for the NES, you you eat something and then you have one move. Right. Kirby Superstar leveled that up mm -hmm. in that you got multiple moves. Right. 
Uh, and Kirby's Dream Land 2 played with this as well, but you had like an animal buddy. Right. And so if you had a power up, you had the Kirby version, mm-hmm. the Rick version, the Koo version, and the Kine version. <laughs> got there. <laughs> um, and what was cool about that is you got new moves. But in Kirby Superstar, now you had button mash moves. So it felt mm-hmm. a little bit more like like a like a final fight or like right. a Streets of Rage type exactly. situation. Or like I, I only have this for a short amount of time. I gotta use it. Well not thing. short amount of time, but it's that I have I have multiple moves and I have like a like a quarter circle B move right. is different than my B oh, move. Absolutely. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. yeah. Or in Super Nintendo so it was Y. Yes. Use yes, me. yes. But um Real the cutter move to get back to that. The cutter move I remember if you got in close quarters with that and just jammed on the Y button, he would do like this like yeah, you yeah. Know, I, Which yeah. Anybody up, who knows the noise knows that was a perfect rendition of that noise. They end up, yeah. That's the, and that ends up being his uh, final smash in Ultimate. It is? It, it, yeah, if you because it's he's he's the no direction B type of Ultimate. Yeah. And then he pulls out the big ass sword and he goes, <laughs> and then whoever gets caught in that sword swipe, that's they're getting smashed. Really? Yeah. That's not sword power? No, no, no. It's it's his it's his it's the cutter. Fine. And yeah, well I, I think the cutter. When he does that move, is that sword? But it's just got that blue, like master swordy type light on it. I think that's. I don't know. It might be. It might be. It might be his sword power because his sword power he would typically don like a link cap in the game. Anyway, point is, he would pull out a switchblade, mess right. you up, right. and then do the jump, spin down, and like the last part of it, it was a combo, came down and sent him flying. They brought in the actual cutter move, right, to be his B up. Right. Uh, and then B writes the mallet, right? B writes the mallet, and that one has a it has a nice little kind of upswing, but really useful if you've got someone knocked out, if someone's stuck with an item. Uh, I'm pretty good at when someone's falling, that someone that does not have aerial mobility. Uh, I'm a real big fan of using my brick to get down to where they're going to be and then just lining one up uh-huh. so that when they land, I know they're coming and I'm going to blow them off the map. Good. It's, re- it's nice. Pretty good. Now, you're putting yourself in a bad spot, especially if it's not a 1v1, but... I, that's my favorite move to do with the mallet is go where someone's about to fall and as they're spinning just line it up and the uh, the guy next to you is playing and he's just like no don't don't you dare don't you dare, don't you dare. see you later and I think the name of the monkey that the name of the gorilla that you ingest to get the power I think his name is Bonkers he's a purple gorilla with a big hammer and that's how you get the hammer I think that's I, I, I just believe. like that it's yeah, I, yeah. and and it's um it's cool like they they really did move set and then if you want to see a breakdown of the regular B move the copy move check out one of the shorts. Which is the highest viewed thing anyone's ever seen <laughs> on Listen, You Jerk, um, which is great. So we got a little bit of you kind of playing as it, mm-hmm. though. What I'm curious about, though, is why is Kirby your main? Why did you originally pick him? Um, honestly, I originally picked him because uh, my brothers both were very good at uh, kind of juggling and, like, keep, you know, once I get it, like, you know, they once they... The joke always was like Max and Tyler would kind of team up on me a little bit. And if, if they got me in the air, I'm done. It's over. Yeah. I'm off the side. Kirby uh, can't do that too. He can't really juggle Kirby. True. Because then I can just just float off. So that was the original reason that I picked up Kirby. Uh, strictly self-preservation. Um, it, I ended up loving certain types of moves. Uh, I'm a real big fan of in the beginning of 4v4 floating above the map. So you can't see me. And then when I when people aren't paying attention, I just drop real hard. Big fan of that one. Call, again, that's sneaky. Call it cheap or not, but that's a big fan of when it's for you know one v one v one v one. Nobody's paying attention to the Kirby guy floating around in the air. So yeah. uh, big. I, I just I just ended up getting used to it. I I with the move sets that came, uh, I got I just kept learning with him, and it just it felt almost like I was growing with Kirby as he was growing as a character. Oh. I mean, honestly, I mean, that's that's why we all like this stuff. It's like with Pokemon, like that was that came out when we first yeah. started. We grew up with it. That's why, you know, like and Harry, I too Harry have gotten Potter. pinker and rounder as I get older. Exactly. See, you get it. You get it. But no, uh, it's just he's he was just a fun character to play. He's got a ton of nuances to him. He's got little like quirks that you don't even know. Like I just found one recently. Uh, if you inhale snake as Kirby and take his power, you're going to use his little bomb thing and Kirby will run off and won't really run that far from it. But if the, if you're in the explosion blast of that, he covers his head and doesn't take like damage or anything. Cool. Yeah, dude. Very like, and I, I literally just saw it watching like a random like YouTube fight or something. And I was just like, what? I was like, did he just protect himself? He should have just blown himself off too. And yeah. he literally just covers his head. It's crazy. But it, like little quirks like that where you like take someone's power, but he still kind of curbifies it a little bit. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. I'm, I'm making a new word. Curbified. 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 But yeah. So, and, and like I've said before, like I'm not even a huge inhaler. Like I'm a big fan of using the inhale and not swallowing mm-hmm. because, you know, 
Sometimes you just got to keep moving. Um, also, I like still having that, as I've said before. Um, but there are still so like several different. It's it's very interesting to be like crap. Like this guy's got my number. He's beaten me. Sure. Like how can I shake it up? And then I take you know. Then you can take a pat. He just there's a lot of different things you can do, especially if you find yourself kind of falling behind in the fight a little bit. Mm-hmm. He's he's resilient. He's he's a comeback king. Comeback king. Um, I I I can speak to playing against Kirby. So. Mm-hmm. There's the name of this little section. <laughs> uh, playing against Kirby, I have played against Kirby more than uh, anybody else. My good friend Chris uh, was always Kirby. I was always Star Fox. And I have played against this stupid little thing so many times. And he's I annoying. Have, if you're good with him, he's annoying as hell. But he's been annoying the whole time. Yeah. yeah. He's been annoying the whole time. He's always had combos, mm-hmm. and he's always had last-minute uh, saves yeah. of, like, where you could just totally change the game with a well-placed stone. As you are, as you are one to do. Well, the play other stone thing. and and the and the floating and then that <gasps> when you get like uh, the amount of le- especially DK country or whatever that level is called, like the yeah. amount of the amount of ledge grabs that Kirby pulls off too is incredible. Well, his vertical is amazing. Yeah, because if you float all the way up and then hit your um so powerful up B, it's yeah. way up there. Yeah, like beyond the the top of the screen. Yeah, so, and it's relatively quiet until he in, uh, until he actually gets a hit. So, like you'll hear the hit, yeah, but then like it's like okay like. Did he hit someone? Like, because a lot of people play with their ears too while they're playing. Like, you're yeah. fighting someone else. But like, if I hear the, the rock form thing happen, I'm playing against Kirby. I'm running. Like, I don't yeah. know where he is, but I'm moving from where I am currently. Right. I now. used to always shield up. Um, well, because I would be. It's the only time where dodges really, really help. Mm-hmm. You know, dodges. I'm glad they're in there, but they can be pretty tricky oh, yeah. to work with. But dodging the stone is a really good move. Yeah, for because sure. you're on your feet faster right. than Kirby gets out of his stone. That's 100%. really the secret. And that's why that's that is when I get caught with Kirby. Exactly yeah. that situation. That that recovery time is a little long, which is why a lot of people don't like it. Mm-hmm. But I don't put myself in that situation unless I'm prepared to take some damage or if I know I'm gonna get out of it. Yeah, the big the big fear of playing against Kirby is to go out into his domain, which is off the ledge. Right. He can get back better than anyone else in the game yeah. from off the ledge. It's controlled. It's simple. You have multiple opportunities. You can milk it like every time you puff and go up yep. a little bit more. You can also, uh, if you want to move quickly or drop elevation fast, you can turn into the the rock and then turn back out of it. Yeah. And, and you still have your fl- like whatever float you had left. Mm-hmm. So like that that is another one where it's like okay, like you know, say we're playing and you actually do come out and fight me up here, and I don't like where it's going. I can just brick and then come back out of it and just yeah. float myself back under. Now you're stuck up there. I'm coming back to you. So the the other thing about him is his A moves are kind of lethal. He has two that uh, give me nightmares. Yeah. Which is which is funny because Kirby's all about dreamland. It is. It is. And he's giving me nightmares. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not like Nightmare from the first bad guy from Kirby's Adventure. Although that was a great bad guy. But though. it feels like someone came into my room and stole my goddamn dream rod. My, star rod. Uh, I was about two to say. Two different things. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> star rod. <laughs> two different things. Get off my star rod. Um, but... One is his A down where he kicks Mm -hmm. and his feet extend. Yeah, and he drills. And he does a drill. Yeah. But he gets more range Mm -hmm. on his down than like the little thing should be able to have, but he's stretchy. Mm -hmm. And it it pops the guy too. So like you don't, even if you, even if you only get him a little bit, it it still bumps him off. It's like 30 hits. Yeah, it's a lot. It's. Which is, which is why everyone talks about like, oh, he's like, he's, he's weak. Like, yeah, he's got good combos, but he's weak. And it's like, right. But like, if I, hit my combo like i might be weak but i still just put 80 80 percent it's not that weak it really a smash isn't. move is a smash move right you know unless you're getting into like the real nitty-gritty but um the other one is where if you're in the air and don't hit a directional hit a he does this weird spin yep. attack yep where it's like your, his hands and legs are out and he like spins yep. that way like and again star. brutal yeah yeah and that's why that's why he's that's why I enjoy him too because he, he's I can be unpredictable with him. Yeah. So like I could I could be sitting there and malleting and and rock forming forming the entire time, but then like when everyone starts playing around and like figures out like my, you know my routine, then I can start hitting like those random like spiral attacks where like people are all of a sudden trying to get to me in the air. And now I can now I'm hitting that spiral attack or I'm like I'm like literally drilling people in the air. Like it's just you can do a lot of different things as long as they're off guard. Yeah, I mean. Let's go into uh, his importance to Smash Brothers because he's very important to Smash Brothers. First of all, we wouldn't have Smash Brothers if it wasn't for the success of Kirby. Right. So that can't go understated. That's what I said in the beginning mm-hmm. is uh, Mashiro Sakurai created Kirby when he was 19. The man's now 52 and created Smash Brothers after that. So you wouldn't get to Smash Brothers, but you wouldn't get to the imaginative idea of it being almost a dreamlike environment. We mm-hmm. are. Smash Brothers is a toy box, remember? Right. The first game is there's a there's a hand called the Master Hand, 
and you see it open the toy box, and in there are a bunch of little figurines like this. And uh, it's little toys, and it's the idea of you're playing with your toys. That comes from Kirby. Right. Kirby is all about dreaming. Kirby is childlike. Kirby is uh, magical. And I keep getting back to that word. Kirby's like the most Disney character in Yeah, I would, I would in agree Nintendo. with that for sure. For sure. As in, he plays to anybody. Kids love him. Adults love him. His first uh, commercial was hilarious. He was still the white puff ball at the time. And he uses his copy ability in the commercial for the game where the copy ability didn't exist. Blow your freaking mind. It's really, <laughs> really interesting to see. They knew what they were planning. I guess so. But anyway. But he, they, they even they even stuck with with, with to that magic and, and like... They even, to this day, in Super Smash Ultimate, he's, yeah. he's the main character. He's the protagonist because the everyone got, I think, at the beginning of it, I've only seen that cutscene once, I think, but that everyone gets like kind of like Thanos turned to dust in the beginning of that yes. game, except for Kirby. Right. Uh, a lot of, and I've seen it on the internet, so I'm not taking full credit for this as like a you know natural idea, but a lot of people think that the reason that Kirby was the choice for that, which is it honestly One, somewhat of One, because of his dad. Right. But, <laughs> but like the, with everyone, you know, Kirby in his games has, uh, whether it's part of him or whether it's just kind of exposure to that, like dark matter, which is like we talked about, it's like a big thing in the Kirby game. That's like kind of like what he's fighting the whole time in many yeah. different forms. Uh, a lot of people say that the reason that Kirby is, you know, that guy that didn't get snapped away and had to be the one that, to like go and save everybody is because he's already fought something like this before. And it's just up oh, dark matters back. I got to go save my friends again. Like it, it like it makes sense the entire the way through that why Kirby's that important. This is going to be a cool chunk of this video because I looked it up. Did you? Why that was. I was doing like some research for this episode and Sakurai explained it. He said Kirby is the only character who has a... um weapon and it has like part of him that defies uh galaxy his warp star is the only reason he can do it because he can go faster than the speed of light and True. go across galaxies he's the only one who would be fast enough to get out of there and can call on that warp star anytime right so secretly it's because you know sakurai was like this is my my baby my baby exactly. doesn't die yeah, yeah, yeah. but at the same time, he had a point. He's like, yeah, yeah, the warp star does defy any sort of gravitational pull, and nobody else can in the, that character list can really do that. You know, there's not um, reality warpers. Kirby's right. a reality warper. Yeah, he literally, literally, because he's been a ball folds. of yarn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's the, and I, and a pinball. He's he's Kirby pinball was so good, dude. So good, very Aww. fun, very <laughs> underrated. Should 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 check out. Um, but no, like that's, that's, and I think that's uh, to what we've already said. That is yeah. what makes Kirby so interesting and versatile in the game. That's also what makes him important to it is that he kind of has that like otherworldly aspect to him that keeps him alive in certain situations. Like it's, it's all tied together in the way that he plays versus the way they used him in the game. And I think it was beautiful. His original game design, the way, and I don't mean the design of the character. I mean, the design of the game right. is awesome where smash brothers gets its fun weird stuff the reason there's items in it is definitely because of kirby yeah you know half of them are half of them come from the game like yeah the, like them like except for the dk mallet the other mallet that you can get pick up back like in the early games that literally looks like the mallet that he has and it looks like the king ddd king ddd king ddd 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 king ddd it looks like his mallet with the star yeah. on it and everything yeah i mean i mean in in those games Part of the fun was there are so many cool power-ups. There are so many different things to get. You know, wanting to see everything was a big part of it. And it was, you know, magic. They just figured out how to make collecting not feel like collecting and instead feel like, oh, my God, he can do this. Oh, and he can do this. And there's a million different powers. And all of that was clearly brought into Smash Brothers to make one of the greatest fighting games of all time. So I don't, you don't get to Smash Bros no. without Kirby. He Definitely is not. arguably the most important character to Smash Bros. Bias, but yes, I would have to agree with that. See, that's why you stick around to the end. You learn something. <laughs> but um, playing as Kirby for you, obviously your main yeah. can be cheap. Playing against him for me, if you get caught in some of those moves, you're kind of screwed. Yeah. But ultimately, great, great character to play as for fun sometimes. I think playing through as advent in adventure mode is more fun to play as him than in I beat the story mode entirely combat. with Kirby. Yeah. Entirely. And I think it's 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 fun to do. But uh yeah, those are our thoughts on on Kirby. So let us know if you think Kirby should still be in D tier. Uh or if you think that he's more important, uh 
than originally thought. I think he's really important, and uh, I'm important. glad he's in the game. Me too. High, u- high uh, utilization factor with him. Oh, last thing. Sorry, last thing. Timestamp. Um, the coolest, one of the coolest things is the copy feature mm-hmm. and the fact that copy works across the board mm-hmm. and all of the Smash Brothers characters, mm-hmm. which means he gets a goatee when he absorbs Snake. Mm-hmm. Cloud, he gets the hair and the sword. You know, Sephiroth. There's a Sephiroth Kirby. That's insane. There's a um, y- Yakuza. Yep. Not Yakuza. What's his name? Kazuya. Kazuma. Ryu? Kazuya. Well, there's that too. There's a Ryu one, <laughs> but there's a Kazuya one from Tekken. Like, half the fun of this is just go absorb everybody, copy everybody, look at the different Kirby's, and just be happy. Definitely true. You, I'm 33 years old, and I'm still finding out that you know the snake uh, copy thing that he covers his head and he's inv- he's immune to that. Like, I'm still finding things at 33. That's a, that's an amazing feat. Go play the game. Go play. Finish. Finish him. Different game. I know. <laughs>